This is Southern Idaho's Local Sports with Brittany Cooper. Oakley traveled to Chalice last Friday and dominated against the winless Vikings. Even though Chalice lost the game, one of its players celebrated a true victory that he'll never forget. Now that elections are over, the next exciting thing happening this week, state football, of course. And besides, Boise State has a bye. Since we posted the one-handed catch from the 3A state championship game on social media, the clip has gone viral. On a pass from Gooding's Wyatt Williams, Clancy Cockrum went up and completed the catch with ease. With more than 231,000 views on my Facebook page, it's being picked up by sports networks. FS1 plans to use it in a variety of ways, starting with at the buzzer. But keep in mind, they call us KMTV instead of KMVT. Common mistake. That's senior wide receiver Clancy Cockerham from Gooding High School in Idaho making an insane one-handed catch in the end zone. Say quack because Oregon jumped undefeated Florida State for the number two spot in the college football playoff rankings. Bronco Nation can be seen and heard at Albertson Stadium on game days. If the season was underway right now, one band would be cheering not from the stands but our hospital bed in Salt Lake City. 13-year-old Lexi Bingham Buell remains hospitalized after breaking her neck while snowboarding. We visited with Lexi and saw her true blue spirit come through on the road to recovery. The NFL and its fans took a huge sigh of relief when a Seattle Seahawks player showed movement after taking a hit that left him motionless yesterday during the Dallas Cowboys game. The biggest game of the year so far for the CSI women's basketball team. The fourth ranked Lay Golden Eagles playing host to the number one ranked Bruins. Both teams entering tonight's contest in 18 and 0. With at least two more matchups this season, this one sets the tone early for where these two teams sit in the rankings. Boise State is 4-1 all-time against BYU. The Cougars will be led by freshman sensation Tanner Mangum, who threw a game-winning Hail Mary to beat Nebraska last week. Meanwhile, the Broncos will be under the direction of Ryan Finley, a redshirt sophomore who's had some trouble in the offseason. When Chris Peterson last year left Boise State for Washington after a dismal 8-5 record, a lot of unknowns surround the program. Then here comes a guy by the name of Brian Harson, the Arkansas State head coach, who would become the first Boise State alum and Boise State quarterback to take over the program as a head coach. And I think it's safe to say that the fans are very appreciative of what he's done for the program. Noah is a Gooding freshman who has Down syndrome. He's going to live out a dream, something he's wanted to do ever since he was a little kid. Let's introduce you to him. Noah, thank you for joining us here this evening. <laughs> Noah, tell me about what's going to happen tonight with Buell Indians. Oh, me, I beat Indians. You're going to beat the Indians? And what are you going to do exactly? Make a touchdown. Okay. And show everyone your touchdown dance. Okay. <laughs> No, what do the kids refer to that to? Good. Is it called the whip and nene? Yeah, the whip and nene. Trying it out, you know, as a college student. So. Words doted by a CSI basketball player after trying marijuana, but for Shaquille Carr, a short-lived experience turned into a night he'll never forget. Now that his freshman year is coming to a close, Carr weighs in on lessons learned and becoming a leader at CSI. <laughs> There's no stopping Shaq Carr. At 18, he's being looked upon as a leader at CSI. He's been an honor student. He's, he's been a role model for the rest of the guys in the team. Anytime anybody else got in any kind of trouble at all or even put themselves in a bad situation, he was there, um, you know, letting them know, hey, I, I'm the example here. I, I really screwed up. In November of 2014, Carr found himself in a predicament at his dorm. He had marijuana on him. Uh, I knocked on the door. Threw it out the window and, and they found it. Campus security called Twin Falls Police. I was uh, charged with possession of marijuana. I got a text message from my assistant coaches. Of course, we had a meeting right away. and It was kind of scary, you know, being a basketball player and all. I thought I was going to kind of be done with the season, kind of be sent home. thought Coach Faye was going to be mad at me, which he was. Carr actually escaped the temptation of drugs in high school. Growing up in Las Vegas, Nevada, it was kind of hard, you know, the gangs, drugs, stuff like that. 
So basketball is kind of like my way out. Now, just one year removed from high school, he's learning that he's not invincible. Trouble can find you at any time. CSI has actually showed me that I got a good support group with teammates, coaches, family, friends. Carr's punishment include a laundry list of items from a two-game suspension to clean the gym after games to loss of room scholarship. I had to move out, had to get my own apartment. Now I'm paying rent as an 18-year-old, which is not fun, but I got to do what I got to do to stay in school. Plus, drug and alcohol counseling. We don't want to just, just send them on their way. We want to make sure and give them maybe some tools they haven't had before to be successful. But chances only go as far as the athlete, as in LaMarcus White's case. White also got into legal trouble, but after so many opportunities, CSI dismissed White from the team. We don't see growth on their part, and if, uh, if there's repeated offenses, uh, at some point we just have to remove ourselves from the situation and let them know they need to go in a different direction. We'd like to say that, that marijuana is not part of our society, uh, but it is. It's a big part, and uh, you know, obviously we want to do what we can to keep our guys and, and all of our student-athletes away from that. As for now, Carr is grateful. Thank you to Coach Faye coaches and staff, CSI, and everybody else that actually gave me a second chance, gave me a chance to lead the team to a regional championship, giving me a chance to play next year. CSI is one of very few junior colleges that actually drug test its athletes. The cost can be expensive, especially for certain drugs.